I was in a play, a production, and it came up in the dressing room, the topic of pro-life or pro-choice. And I was the only person in the room who was pro-life. And at that moment, I felt so scared because I didn't want anyone to be upset, but nobody else was on my side and I had no idea how to fight for it. We need to change the culture. And I think there's, there's really three ways to deal with that. First is education and particularly for the young people. It's really kind of sad for me to say it, but I feel like if I hadn't gone to pro-life boot camp at public school, they might have swayed my views a bit. Now that I've been to boot camp, I've seen all of these people, I've been exposed to all this information. It was only three day, a three-day weekend, but it was like one of the most meaningful weekends that I've had. I believe it was the Saturday in boot camp that we all took a bus down to the Cemetery of Innocence. On the way there, it was, it was lots of fun. We were joking around with our friends. I don't think any of us really realized what we were about to do. As we stepped off the bus, it got really, really quiet. And we realized we're in a cemetery and like this has to be pretty serious. They handed me a red rose. It just looked like the most perfect, beautiful, untouchable flower. We stepped over to the one headstone for these thousands of unborn children who were buried there. It made me sort of sad because not everyone got to be recognized, and that's still a human life that deserves recognition. When it was time to leave the cemetery, we all went up and we placed our flower in these vases. And it was really hard for me to let that flower go because I just felt like that was one child who I could have given recognition for a life. But there were thousands more who would never get that. That one memory really sticks out to me because it's always going to be something in the back of my mind as a reminder to keep fighting. <laughs>